Um, first of all, just a big thanks for being here. Um, I know this year has has been different for everyone, and um, these Zoom meetings are becoming more customary, which I personally don't like, but um, some people might prefer it. So anyway, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Um, this is kind of just some more info about the UCCS Sport Management Program. Um, and what we've done is we've assembled a panel of students because we felt that um, you guys would most likely want to hear from people who are in the program and people who live it every day. So um, Ian Ratz is probably who you've had a lot of contact with. He's our, um, oh, I can't remember his official title, but uh, I believe he's the Assistant Director of Student Services or something like that for uh, the Sport Management Program. Um, and he sends his regards and says, says thanks for coming. But um, without further ado, we'll get right into it. And what we wanted to do first is kind of go around the room um, for current students and just kind of introduce ourselves, you know, kind of explain how we got here. Um, we got all your pre-submitted questions and um, we felt that this would answer a lot of them right off the bat. So we'll each take a couple minutes, kind of give our, you know, basic story about how we got here, where we're from, all that jazz. And and uh, after that, we'll we'll open it up to to some questions from you guys. So, um, also, if you didn't hear, just keep yourself on mute. You can keep your camera on or off, um, I, I, whatever you prefer. Um, but until we're done, you know, introducing ourselves, just just keep yourself on mute um, for the purposes of some housekeeping there. So, um, I'll go ahead and start. My name is Aaron Griffith, and I am the um, SMAC president. Uh, SMAC is the Sport Management Activities Council. Uh, we take a lot of opinions from students and, and try to uh, implement them in various events, guest speakers and stuff like that. And everybody um, will have their own kind of unique perspective on that. But um, I'm currently a senior in the sport management program. This will be um, hopefully, fingers crossed, my last semester here. I'll graduate in May. Um, I'm originally from Thornton, Colorado, which is about 30-ish minutes north of Denver. Um, and I came to UCCS because A, I wanted to be relatively close to home. I kind of wanted the college experience and still be able to drive up and see the family and, and do all that fun stuff. Um, but I also was really, really drawn to the sport management program. Um, I played sports all my life. I've loved sports all my life. And um, I knew that I wanted to uh, continue my career and my life in sports. So that's kind of what brought me here. It was kind of the perfect marriage for me. And um, I have a feeling that you'll hear a lot of a lot of similar stories um, from some of these other students that are here today as well. So um, that's a little bit about me. I'll kind of go around the room here and, and introduce some of these other students that we have today. Um, I'll start with you, Gianni. You're first up on my screen. So if you just want to give a little brief intro and and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so my name is uh, Gianni Martinez. I am from Broomfield, Colorado. Um, and I am currently a junior. I am hoping to graduate definitely next year, hopefully, uh, maybe a semester later or so. Um, but other than that, the reason I joined um, the sport management program and UCCS more specifically is because, um, similar to Aaron, is I, I love sports. Um, my whole life has been around sports. I played soccer. Um, I do a little bit of golf here and there. And I do MMA currently, so kind of um, all different, um, if you want to say that. But um, other than that, I was very drawn to the Olympics. I love watching the Olympics every time it comes on, winter, summer. Um, and it doesn't matter what sport, I love learning new sports. Um, so that was my biggest pull um, of why I really wanted to come to UCCS, you know, Colorado Springs, Olympic City, USA. So that was definitely got my attention the most. Um, I currently just got done with an internship. I had an internship with Kroenke um, in developing some theme nights. Um, I can go on a whole 30-minute spiel about that, so I'm just going to keep it brief with that right there. But yeah, I, um, I hope you guys are excited to hear what we have to say today. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Gianni. And Gianni brings up a really good point. There are a lot of awesome opportunities down here in Colorado Springs, um, more than I think people realize. Obviously, there's the Olympics, but um, there's a whole, you know, multitude of, of sports entities down here, and um, we'll get into that here uh, in a few minutes. So uh, thanks, Gianni. Let's move on to Courtney. Courtney, you're next on my on my screen there. Hey, everyone. I'm Courtney. Um, so I actually decided to come to UCCS because of the sports management program. I think my sophomore year of high school, 
Um, I'm not quite sure how I came across it, but I knew what I wanted to do with my life and getting a degree in sports management was just made the most sense. I'm super happy I did it. I love being around sports people because they just kind of get you in a different way, the competitive aspect, the just the joy that sports bring. So I'm really excited to be here and also work with uh, the Olympic movement as well, like Gianni said. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, moving down the list, Audrey, you are your next here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Audrey Bloomquist, and I am originally from Helena, Montana. So um, I moved a little bit farther away from home, but um, I, like Aaron mentioned, um, I'm also on SMAC. I'm a board member on SMAC. Uh, this is my second year in the program. I'm a sophomore, and um, I'm also a student athlete. I run track here at UCCS. I'm a sprinter and jumper on our women's team. Um, so obviously kind of that, um, my athletic career in combination with just the endless amount of sport opportunities that Colorado Springs has to offer really kind of, um, helped, you know, make my decision to come to UCCS easy. And, um, aside from all the sport opportunities, I think the coolest part about our school is that we, um, have a very highly accredited program and our campus just continues to grow. Um, it's been super fun to, you know, watch UCCS become even more uh, a part of the Colorado Springs community and just grow as far as um, how people view our academics. Um, so that's been pretty neat to be a part of. Um, and also Colorado is absolutely beautiful. Our campus has a perfect shot of Pikes Peak, and I don't know how you can complain about that. So, um, yeah, just kind of all those things combined to make UCCS sort of the perfect fit for me. Um, like a lot of my peers, I'm interested in the Olympic movement. I was a gymnast throughout high school. So um, gymnastics and track kind of both being Olympic sport. I think that's sort of where my passion is, but I'm also interested in collegiate athletics. So haven't really made my decision yet, but um, yeah, I'm ex super excited to be here with you guys today and make sure you feel free to ask any questions because now's the time. It's only students, so don't feel any pressure. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, Audrey, that's that's a great point. Um, we're here to to answer your questions kind of as as honestly and sincerely as we can. So that's really the biggest thing that we'd like to get out of this is to be able to you know send you guys home with the answers that you really want to know. So when we do get to the question portion, that's a great point. Um, just you know, don't be shy. We're we're not here to judge or anything by that by any means. Um, and another point that I wanted to make too is Audrey and Liam, who we'll hear from here in a minute, uh, they're both student athletes. So they would be really good people to ask about stuff like that if um, if that's a path that you'd like to go down. So uh, just keep that in mind when we get to the questions. And now I will turn it to Logan. All right, my name is Logan and I'm a freshman. So this is uh, my sixth, seventh month in the program. And uh, like Gianni, I'm also from Broomfield, Colorado. So I've lived here all my life. And um, I chose UCCS solely because of the sport management program. I remember when I was in your shoes and I was looking for schools after I saw UCCS and all it has, I didn't even look anywhere else. And for me, uh, I've always been a sports nerd. I played baseball and basketball growing up. And um, when I saw that UCCS is in a AACSB accredited business school, you know, when you combine sports and business, that's kind of like the perfect nexus for me. So um, that's really what drew me to the program. And since I've been in the program, there's really been no looking back and there's been no regrets. So, uh, so yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Logan. Um, let's go to Taylor. Hi everyone, um, my name is Taylor Silbernagel. So I'm from Corvallis, Oregon. Um, so pretty far away from um, Colorado. Um, but the reason I chose UCCS obviously because of sport management program, but also Colorado is so beautiful. Um, I couldn't pass up. I'm a really big outdoorsy person. So I love being close to campus. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm a freshman. Obviously I live on campus. Um, I've been doing remote um, this past semester for a little bit. Um, but in the fall, I had an internship along with Audrey and Logan um, with National Wheelchair Basketball Association um, slash like USA Wheelchair Basketball. So that has been a great experience. And I just got an internship this 
spring with USA Artistic Swimming in their national office. So that's super cool. Um, but yeah, the sport management program, you can't really go wrong. And I think it's the big, biggest part that I've learned being in it for what, seven months. It's kind of just what you put in is what you get out. Um, and so you'll see that in a lot of what we talk about. But yeah, I'm super excited to get to talk to you guys. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, Gracie, you want to go next? Yeah. Um, so I'm Gracie. I, I say I'm from Colorado because I pay in-state tuition, but I'm from New Mexico, but I'm pretty much from here. Um, and I originally didn't want to be in the sport management program. I wanted to be a teacher um, before. And then 2016, I went to Olympic trials because my mom works at USA Swimming. And like seeing someone become an Olympian is like, a once in a lifetime thing. And it kind of sold me on sports, um, especially the business side of sports. Cause I played sports, I coached sports, um, but seeing the business aspect of it and everything that goes into putting on like a huge event, like Olympic trials was like mind blowing. Um, and so I talked to Ian, like many of you probably have, and he kind of just sold me on it. And Olympics is definitely the route I want to take. Um, I've interned at USA Fencing. My sister works at USA Hockey. Um, so we kind of got the Olympic movement going on in my house right now. So yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that's an awesome perspective because most of us were, you know, we were pretty dead set on the program. So it's interesting to hear that uh, you wanted to kind of go down a different path. So for all your prospective students out there, if you're, you know, kind of on the fence, Gracie might be a, a good one to ask about that. Um, looks like our last student on the panel is Liam. Uh, so Liam, if you want to take it away there, buddy. All right. I'm another out-of-state kid. I'm Liam from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, another big sports guy, big soccer and basketball. Go Bucks. I've had a few internships in Colorado Springs with the minor league soccer team. I uh, got some experience at the U.S. Hang Gliding and Paragliding Association, which is a really strange name for a company, strange sport, but it was fun. And I'm currently working with the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. So facility and event management is kind of what I want to get into. And I'm learning a lot from them this summer. Um, and yeah, student athlete like Audrey, if you got any questions about student athlete schedule on campus, feel free to ask. Yep. Thanks, Liam. Yeah, don't get Liam started on the bucks or we'll be here. We'll be here all day. Um, but yeah, that's so those are all our current students that we have on the panel today. Um, before I do open it up to questions, which we, we do really, really want to hear from you. That's that's really the whole point of this. Uh, webinar and, and informative um, kind of session here. Um, I do just want to touch on, you know, some of the opportunities. You've heard a lot of us talk about the Olympic movement, which is obviously probably the most prominent um, opportunity we have down here in Colorado Springs, but, um, you know, Air Force Athletics are down here. That's, uh, you know, obviously a D1 school. Um, interning within the UCCS Athletic Department, um, I've seen students do. Um, I personally, I work for the Rocky Mountain Vibes, which is a minor league baseball team. I mean, technically we're independent now, but uh, we used to be a minor league team for the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, so we're a pro ball team down here. Um, and then we have ties to Denver. We have a big partnership with Kroenke. So there's, um, you know, the Rams, the Avs, the Nuggets, um, all those teams, uh, the Rapids, they fall under the Kroenke umbrella. So those are, those are big opportunities. And um, we have, we have contacts all over the place. So um there's really just just a multitude of, of options and opportunities for you guys um, here in the Springs. So um, with that being said, we really truly do want to open the floor to you guys. So, um, you know, prospective students, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. And so uh, if you do have a question, um, you can either send it into the chat down there um, or you can, you know, unmute yourself and just just ask away and, and we'll be happy to answer for you. Does anybody want to be brave and, and volunteer themselves first? I'll go first. I'll ask a question. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Carter. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to hear from no one in particular, um, but just kind of go into detail about one of the internships that you've done and kind of what you do kind of day to day on the internship and how it leads you to like choose what career path you want to go into. Yeah, Carter, let me ask you first, what are you interested in? What would you want to go into? Do you I have absolutely me? no idea 
yet. But, uh, um, what's, what's your favorite sport? How about that? Um, I would say it's basically a tie between football and basketball, I would say. so. Okay. So I know Logan has done some stuff with basketball. I've done stuff with basketball and football. Um, but yeah, anybody who, you know, has, has kind of an insight on, on either basketball or football has done an internship there. I feel free to, to take that question. Yeah, Logan, I can don't... talk a little bit about it. I don't want to be the only one that talks about it, but with basketball, <laughs> Taylor touched on it that Taylor, Audrey, and I interned with the National Wheelchair Basketball Association, so NWBA. Um, but with internship stuff, it's all remote right now for the most part, but we would go in the office twice a week for four hours and it was just me or whoever was in and basically our boss. And so it was just us two. And um, with basketball in specific, like, you know, it's, it's, each sport is a little different. Each sport is a little the same, but I think you figure out what you like and what you don't like with internships. So for you not really knowing, I don't know what the heck I want to do either. Cause it's like really broad. So with internships, you you figure out what you like and what you don't like within a sport. So um, I guess that would be my answer. Again, I don't really want to be the only one that answers that question, though. Yeah, Liam, why don't you tag onto that? I was just going to say another good thing about UCCS is the, the selection of courses helps you decide kind of what you're into. Uh, I've taken classes on sport law, sport marketing, I'm taking sports sales with Aaron right now and sport facility and event management. So just kind of learning from different professors and learning different uh, aspects of the sport industry will definitely help you decide what you're kind of looking for. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, Liam. And I always tell, I always tell incoming students that it's not necessarily the sport you want to work in. It's the field, right? So, you know, there's marketing and there's sales and there's facility management and there's there's so, so much that goes into a sport, you know, organization that um, quite honestly, I didn't realize un until I got here. So Liam, that's a good point and, and I'm glad you brought that up. But Taylor, you wanna add on to that a little bit? Yeah, so like Logan said, obviously, and Audrey too, um, I was with NWBA as well. So I was their membership and marketing intern. So an interesting thing is like, like Aaron just touched on, it kind of is like the field you go into. Cause if you do basketball and like the collegiate stuff, Side, that'll probably look a little bit different than what it would look like on the Olympic side. Like, for example, a lot of things I do is working with like membership because obviously Olympic national governing body is a nonprofit. Um, so a lot of it is people buy memberships and a lot of it is um, making sure people are rostered on the right teams and there's different logistics. So although it's like basketball is like obviously in sport, it's different with different places you do it at. So that's super interesting. I know Logan was the operations intern and Audrey did events. And so kind of it's super cool. You can kind of go... And it, like, just because you go into an internship, you can kind of wear a bunch of hats. So even though I was labeled as that and Audrey was labeled as events and whatever, we didn't just do that. So that's super cool. You kind of like, you can, a lot of people that I've talked to at least, and I bet everyone would back me up. Um, they just want to get you the most experience you can. So they're not going to pigeonhole you into one thing. And so that's one thing that's super cool is you kind of can wear a ton of hats um, at different internships in that sense. Yeah, I yeah, think, thanks. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Audrey. No, you're good. I was just going to add on to what Taylor was talking about. Um, and just kind of in internships in general, um, that's something to take into consideration when you're looking for an internship is if you want to work for a really large organization, that's awesome. That's cool. But you might have a little bit more of a narrow, um, you know, job title or job description, with, whether you do, you know, say pro sports or something like that. Um, but if you go into an organization that's maybe a little bit smaller, you are going to wear more of those hats. Like Taylor said, you're going to take on a little bit more roles. So, um, that's just another thing to consider when you're going into internships. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. I'm glad you two really brought that up because I, I was going to say something similar, but, um, Carter really, it, it you know, for me, it, it's very helpful to intern somewhere where, you know, you're motivated. So if you really like basketball, for example, it is helpful to, to be in a basketball organization. It's fun. And it's, you know, you enjoy the game and you enjoy, you know, the product on the court, you know, so to say. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, um, a USA swimming internship would, would be bad for you or anything. Like a lot of the skills that you would learn transfer really, really easily into, into other sports um, here in the industry and stuff like that. So, 
Um, Carter, does that answer your question? It was kind of long winded from all of us, but uh, did you get enough out of that? Yeah, that, that was um, that was very helpful. Yeah, thank you guys. Awesome, cool. Thanks, Carter. Um, how about some other questions? Anybody have anything else to ask here? We've got uh, we've got thirty five ish minutes to kill, so it's going to be long if we just sit here and and stare at each other. Um, I had a question about like how. Um, I guess I don't really know much about like um, agents like wanting to be like an agent for athletes but like how would that work and how would you like choose to go down that path because don't you have to take like some law um, classes? Yeah Olivia that's a great question. Um, I think some of the upperclassmen might be better at answering this question. Um, there's a course in our curriculum uh, dedicated to sport law taught by uh, Bill Robers. He's an actual lawyer and um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think he was an agent at one point, actually, as well. Um, from what I understand, you do have to go to law school eventually and uh, get your law degree. Um, but the sport law class is a great intro because I think uh, Rovers, his first thing he says is like, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Right. And so um, I think that's similar for a lot of fields. But um, I'll let I'll let some other folks touch on this. But, yeah, I do think that. You need an undergrad degree and a law degree to be, you know, a certified agent. But um, I, I could be I could be wrong on that. Does anybody know more about that? I think I remember him telling us because I just took it last semester that you just need a higher degree in something. It doesn't have to be law. Like it could be philosophy if you wanted it to be. Sure. You just have to be educated because the reason they do that is they don't want people from like high school or like a friend from high school and then a friend from college, they go to college together to be their agent because they just got a degree. So they want someone mm -hmm. higher up in that field. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds right. Um, Robers, he brings in a really, really interesting guest speaker who I, I think he's currently a practicing agent. And so he, um, you know, kind of gives insights on like signing players and, and doing some of those day-to-day -day things that, that agents typically do. So, um, there's definitely some opportunity and, and some knowledge here in the program about um, being an agent. So, Olivia, did that answer your question? Did that cover it enough for you? Yeah, I did. I was just wondering kind of like the basics, like how you would know that you wanted to start doing that. Yeah, um, the class is the class really is is a really good first stepping stone. Um, but a lot of it is like ethics. Um, so if you're into that, like government, obviously, and, and law itself, really, um, those are, you know, some of the key pillars, I would say, um, about sport law and, and being an agent. Um, but, you know, it, the sport world is, it's different, but it's not from a, from a typical business world. Like sport, I'd say, is a lot more intensive. Um, so, you know, you're, you're going to get the same things that you would be if you were a regular lawyer, um, but it's going to be, you know, kind of a little more intense and, um, but it's also more fun because it's, because it's sport and it's something that you love. So anybody oh, else want to kind of piggyback off that real quick. Um, from what I experienced in his class, what I really liked about it is that at least for us that semester, he brought in a lot of guest speakers and they were from, mm -hmm. um, I think, I think Liam was in my class in that. Um, but he ended up bringing in a, an agent that was currently working for the NFL. And then we ended up having Travis Tigger, um, CEO of USADA. So you definitely get um, a lot of different experiences of guest speakers. Um, they give you their opinions. They give you their, their insights, their knowledge. Um, so it really um, definitely kind of gives you an idea if that's something you really want to do. Um, for me, I thought it was really exciting. But from taking that class, I also realized eh, it's not really the way I want to go. Um, events and facility management is why I ended up um, wanting to pursue more specifically in the future. And that's really good about a lot of the classes you'll take with sport management, especially when you start getting into the more specific stuff like sport law and um, sport marketing and stuff like that is because they really um, let you know and inform you on what do you like, what do you want to do. So as you take classes, you start kind of getting more of that insight. Yeah, awesome. Um, Olivia, anything anything else you want to follow up with there? Oh, no, that was good. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Olivia, thank you for being brave and, and asking a question. 
Um, I do have two questions in the chat here I'm seeing. So Dylan, I'll answer yours first or will answer yours first. Um, and Dylan asked, how do you get involved in SMAC? And um, I will, you know, kind of start it off and then and then leave it to the group here. But um, SMAC is a, is a really awesome organization and we're all a part of it. And, and I, you know, don't want to speak for anyone, but I think we all love it. Um, it. It gives us the ability to take what students want and put it into practice. So um, let's say, for example, Dylan, you were really interested in baseball and you wanted to work in analytics or something like that. Um, you could tell us that we would take that info and go out and try and find like a guest speaker who works in a front office in analytics or, um, you know, look for conferences that you could attend that, like that are specific for analytics. So um, getting involved in SMAC is really easy. We open, you know, we open it to everyone. We want to hear everyone's opinions. Um, there are some formal positions in SMAC. Um, the majority of us on the call here are board members. Um, so they, you know, we're just constantly attending meetings and, um, you know, putting, putting some of these events into practice. Um, there's a vice president and then a president. I'm the president this year. Um, it changes every year for the most part. And um, there's some elections, stuff like that. But but getting involved early is is really easy, really, really easy. And and um, I'll actually I want to hear from some of the freshmen that are on this call because um, they're going to be the ones who have most recently gotten into SMAC. And, and I think they could lend a little bit of a different perspective than I could. So Taylor or, or Logan, do you want to one of you two want to kind of jump on that real quick? You can go first, Taylor, if you want. All right. Um, yeah, so I was in your guys' shoes not that long ago. Um, I basically, so we send out, they send out emails all the time. If you're in the sport management program, you'll get emails um, to your UCCS email. And so I kind of kept seeing like smack, smack, smack. And I was like, okay, I'll jump on and see what this is all about. Um, and so basically I just, I'm not like an elected position or anything like that. I kind of just go to every meeting and then eventually um, kind of worked up the courage to like talk. And so you, I mean, it's super cool. Like you get to meet new people um, and kind of like, like to sit in and like kind of see what it's all about, but also you get to have your own input as well. But yeah, I just go to every meeting. Um, the meetings are about an hour. They're on Wednesdays for us. Like right now, that's what we do. Um, so it's not like some like huge like commitment, um, but it's super fun to get involved, even though it's not like an elected position. Um, but yeah, Logan can touch a little bit more on that too. Yeah, so getting involved, um, the meetings are virtual. So I remember the way I kind of got involved was one, attending the meeting. And we were hosting a movie night and um, we wanted to watch a sports movie. So how I got involved was I went to the library and I found like Moneyball and The Blind Side and other sports movies. And that's how I got involved was just really just doing something very simple, like finding a movie. And then after that, I realized, okay, I can do this and then I can do this. And then, you know, everyone volunteers to do certain stuff. So the more you want to be involved, the more you can. Like Taylor said, the you get out what you put in. So um, getting involved is easy. There's really no pressure to do a certain amount of stuff. But if you want a, as much responsibility as you want, you can get it. So. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Touch oh, on go that. Ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I shouldn't have interrupted. <laughs> Um, but for getting involved in stuff, like you said, it's really simple and you just kind of integrate yourself into there. Like I'm a big ideas gal. I love coming up with stuff like the movie night. I worked really hard on that. And was, well, I say really hard, not that hard, um, because it was kind of easy, but it was fun to do. Uh, we have some other ideas on the books. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity, especially if you like to, to plan things and to help people out. And another great thing is it gets your name out there because I get to be on these emails with all these like big time sports people who I want an internship for later and who will know my name and have name recognition. Um, and you also will sometimes for our events, you'll get like a little badge that'll say like smack board member. And that just puts you ahead um, from the other people in the program. So I think it's a really great opportunity. Yeah, thanks, Courtney. Uh, Gracie, why don't you go ahead there? Yeah, so I was just going to say SMAC is like a no pressure commitment thing. It's super casual. So like if you can't come to every meeting, like we're not going to hold it against you. It's student ran. So it's, it's like this where we kind of sit and talk and throw ideas around and 
Um, it's not something that we're going to like hold you to and be like, you have to attend these meetings. Like we all chose to be board members or chose to attend these meetings. But if you can't commit every week, like, don't worry about it. My freshman year, I couldn't commit to it that often. Um, but I like loved what they like stood for. So I continued it my sophomore year and now I'm a board member. So like start going by one meeting, like you don't have to commit to it, but one meeting, like what's it going to do to you? Yeah, Gracie, that's a really good really point. Um, I just want to touch on that really quick because um, even sometimes I'm not the best about going to meetings. Like I just missed our one last week and I kind of felt bad because I forgot. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's super like low pressure. It's just we want what's the best for you guys. And so if you have a, a good idea, you know, bring it one week and, and um, you know, we can get you involved like that. Um, another quick point I want to make is Taylor brought up like you meet new people and you you develop these friendships. And, and I can attest to that when I first started uh, my freshman year on SMAC, um, I met some of my closest friends today. And it's especially for, you know, incoming students and freshmen and, you know, some of these younger students, it's really kind of helpful to have someone or multiple people there who can not necessarily guide you along, but, you know, kind of be with you, uh, you know, as you, as you go through this journey. So um, that's a, that's another really cool thing about SMAC is, is even if you, you know, don't even want to contribute any ideas or, or anything like that, like that's totally fine. Like, even if you want to just come out, hang out for an hour or something like that with, with people who are also in sport management, that's, that's another um, really big benefit of, of SMAC. Um, did I cut somebody off? Did I hear somebody trying to talk just a moment ago? Or am I hearing things? I must be hearing things. Okay. Um, Dylan, I, I hope that um, answered your question. Um, but let's let's move on to um, this next question that I have. And it reads, are there many opportunities to get internships during these times? What was your favorite experience either during an internship or during a class? Um, I'll just kick it off really briefly. You know, obviously these times are, are really, really difficult for, for everybody, especially sports. Sports has been hit really, really hard um, by, by the pandemic. Um, but if you're, if you're willing to kind of compromise a little bit, there are a lot of organizations that need help now more than ever. And so there are a lot of internship opportunities still out there and, and, and still available. So um, that is kind of a silver lining, I guess, to this pandemic where organizations do really need help and, and um, you know, they're, they're willing to take you with open arms. So um, there's definitely that going on. Um, and I'll let some of these other guys talk on that and, and um, speak on their favorite experiences during an internship in class and stuff like that. So um, do you want to, one of you guys want to take the floor here? Um, yeah, I was just going to point out also that we have a great um, resource center. You'll kind of learn about that through um, Canvas that Ian and Rachel run. And it's a great spot to find internships, to find field experience. Um, it's super accessible. They're constantly updating it. Uh, sport organizations provide opportunities to them and then they just post it out there for us. So that's kind of how I find my internship opportunities and field experience. But um, I think Logan had mentioned it earlier, but the internship that me and Logan and Taylor were a part of was um, you know, heavily remotely based. Um, and right now, obviously that's, it might be a good time to kind of get in the swing of remote working just because that might be sort of the trend for a lot of organizations um, is to work remotely. So I found it um, actually beneficial to kind of learn how to communicate with the boss remotely, how to, you know, manage your time remotely. So um, just because yes, obviously it's a bummer time, but there's still so many opportunities for organizations and they need help. So that's just one way to kind of get into it and um, learn how to, you know, find those internships right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Audrey. Um, does anybody else wanna tag onto that? Um, one thing, so I just started a new internship with USA Artistic Swimming and something that's super cool is like Aaron said, obviously sports are kind of like an in the unknown right now. Um, but like, for example, last weekend, we had like the first ever virtual artistic swimming event. So you're kind of seeing these like pioneer events happening because like this has never been a thing before and we don't know when it's not going to be a thing anymore. So it's kind of like just a new world that you're learning and getting into. Um, but as my, I it was, I mean, it's scary because you think, oh, like it's hard to get jobs right now, but like Aaron said, like 
they want interns because they don't have to pay interns and interns can kind of get the work done. Um, and I think a lot of it is just kind of your own experience. And like Audrey, something that's super cool about, I know as a freshman, we have a thing called field experience hours. Um, you have to get like 50 field experience hours by your sophomore year area. Um, mm -hmm. And a, a big thing, that a way that I kind of met people in the sport industry during COVID is through the volunteer opportunities they posted on that sport management resource center. And so that's a super easy way as a freshman, like they'll be like, oh, there's a spike ball tournament happening in a couple weekends. They need volunteers, email this person. And then you automatically kind of build connections with people. Um, so that's something that's super cool. If you don't want to get into a big internship, there are like field experience opportunities that you can get out and still meet people and not commit to like this huge thing your freshman year. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a really good perspective, Taylor. And um, Saudi, we'll jump back to your question here in a moment. But Connor, I see your question here, and you asked, "Do you expect internships to be remotely based next year?" And um, I can I can personally touch on that here real quick. Uh, it, I think it's going to be kind of like fifty fifty, um, depending on what the organization does, you know, how they kind of operate. Um, I know for me, um, I actually just hired interns, which was a wild experience, you know, having been an intern for so long, but um, all of our internships at the at the Vibes are going to be in person this year. So um, I think we're slowly starting to uh, transition back to your traditional in-person um, internship, which which is really exciting. But I also think like what Audrey said, some of these organizations might see this as an opportunity to, you know, keep people at home and, and keep people comfortable in the in the comfort of their living room or their bedroom or wherever they may be. Um, and, and let them kind of work remotely. So um, Connor, I just want to touch on that real quick um, while I saw that. And then guys, the second part of Sadi's question is, um, what were some of your favorite experiences during an internship or a class? So does anybody uh, want to tackle that part of the question here real quick? Um, I can tackle it. Um, I interned at USA Fencing and I was a member services, like that was my title. Um, but I like, knew the guy and I had talked to him about like working events and he was like okay um in two weeks you're going to Baltimore to go work a national fencing tournament and I was like what like and it was a really cool opportunity um which is kind of rare for that type of organization to send someone because they are small so they don't really have the funds to send your interns across the country all the way to Baltimore um but it was like the coolest experience um, for me personally, just because it kind of like secured like my ambition for sport management. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm sold. This is exactly what I want to do. Like, I'm good. We're fine. <laughs> so that was my cool experience. Yeah, that's an awesome one. And especially the Olympic bodies, they do tend to send people, you know, all over the country. They have a lot of national events that you know, it's not just the Olympics for them. There are a lot of things that happen, you know, throughout the throughout the year and throughout that four year period that um, they're not, you know, competing on a global scale. So that's a really, really good um, example of that. Um, anybody else have a, a really fun, cool experience that they want to share? Um, I can maybe touch on like a class experience, um, but my freshman year, I was in one of Tommy's classes is just an intro to sport management class. Um, and we present case studies. There's two that you do throughout the semester. We present case studies. And um, after I presented mine, Tommy came to me and um, asked if I would want to do this kind of national convention for um, these sport management case studies, basically, and as a presentation. And um, unfortunately, we didn't get to go. Um, it was supposed to be, I think, in South Carolina. Actually, Aaron and I were going to be on a team. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get to go. But just, you know, the recognition from a professor um, was really, really cool. And I think that's something to kind of touch on for all of our professors. You can really uh, establish a personal relationship with these professors. And it's awesome because they have so many cool connections. So um, our specifically our sport professors, I think, are so awesome about, um, you know, realizing that we're sport management students that want to get involved in the industry and they have that experience. So um, yeah, I just think if you can take advantage of, you know, the experience that they have, you'll really have an advantage. So. Yeah, Audrey, first of all, I like completely forgot that we were going to go do that. That seems like it was so long ago. Um, but just real quick for all you prospective students, we have two main faculty members that teach a good majority of our sport emphasis classes. Uh, Tommy Eicher, um, he was 
he was at Cincinnati for a long time. He was at Texas A&M. He's worked in minor league baseball. He's done, he's done all sorts of stuff. Um, so he's one of our main professors. Um, and then Spencer Harris is our other main professor. He's from uh, somewhere in England and he worked in the uh, soccer industry over there for a long, long time. So um, he lends a really interesting perspective for any of you soccer fans that are that are out there in the audience. So I uh, just wanted to touch on that real quick. We keep throwing around Spencer and Tommy like, um, you know, like you guys know them, but uh, to us, they're, you know, we see them every day. So we've we've all grown really close to them and, and they're they're wonderful, wonderful professors. So um, whenever you hear Spencer or Tommy, that's that's who we're talking about. Um, unless anybody else has a has a really cool experience they want to share. Um, I do have another question. So um, um, does anybody else have a, an experience? I just wanted to say that since we don't necessarily know what's going to happen um, for classes next semester, if y'all do end up having stuff online, the professors do a really great job of engaging you. Like I know my um, sports science class I took last semester with Ian was super fun and it was online. I can't imagine what it would have been like in person. So don't worry about being bored in class. If you're on a computer, it'll still be a good time and you'll learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And um, Gracie and Liam, we're, we're all in this sales and analytics class with Tommy and um, it's been going really, really well. I was, I was a little worried that it wouldn't, but um, at least personally, I, I would say that it's going really well online here so far. So um, thanks for bringing that up, Courtney. That's a really good point. Um, okay, let's pop over to Tyler's question here. Tyler sa Tyler's asking, uh, what type of internships would be helpful for going into the front office um, slash operations of a professional sport organization? Um, I'll touch on that real quick and then again, open it up to the to the panel here. But, um, you know, a lot of what we talked about earlier was, you know, you, you go to these internships and you develop these more so skills as opposed to, you know, working with a certain sport. And I think that, you um, if you found a skill that you were really interested in, like kind of like what we mentioned, like that would be the most valuable to you to, to kind of keep going. And so um, Tyler, let's say you're really interested in um, social media, right? You want to run a social media account for, for the Rockies who uh, have an excellent one, by the way. Um, you know, going and getting internships with, with organizations like um, USA Swimming or uh, USA Racquetball, um, you know, some of these um, NGBs or like some smaller organizations even, and just learning how to manage a social media account there, um, that's going to transfer for you for you anywhere. And so then you can walk into the front office of the Rockies and be like, hey, I, you know, I managed this social media account for X years and, and did, uh, you know, all that. So that would be I take on it and, and guys, I'll let you, you know, kind of Yeah, so I think that was a really good point. Um, I wouldn't say there's a specific internship really for any sort of position. I feel like anything you do in terms of an internship is just really good experience. You know, it's a foot in the door. Um, I know a lot of people that have started out from, you know, a smaller organization. Um, and then next thing you know, they're the GM of some sort. So honestly, anything you can get is, you know, the better. Um, and what's really cool about not only just the Olympic NGBs, but any sport organization is that whoever you work for probably knows someone else. Um, so, for example, the person at USA Weightlifting probably knows the person at um, USOPC. Um, so it's all just a big circle. It's a whole big chain. Um, so just any internship, no matter what it is, it's going to be super beneficial. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn things you don't even you didn't know you knew how to do. Um, so you um, just honestly, just it's just a foot in the door. And from that point on, it only excels. Yeah, Johnny, that's a, that's a really good point. A lot of these people down here are really connected with each other. And um, like Gianni said, if, if you take an internship with USA Swimming, um, and that's not where you want to be, well, chances are that person that you're working for at USA Swimming will know someone where you do want to go. So um, that's that's a really good point to bring up there, Gianni. Um, anybody else want to want to touch on this question at all? Any other perspectives, maybe? 
Um, something slightly different than internships. We've talked a bit about the field experience. So it's basically just volunteer hours for different things. And those are also some really amazing opportunities um, that are gonna help you get internships and get jobs in the future. So we do have more than internships and classes. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks for mentioning that, Courtney. Um, Tyler, I hope that that answered your question. Um, that's all I have in the chat here. So um, open it up to you guys again. We've got about 10, 15 ish minutes. So um, any pressing questions? Um, we can also answer questions about like campus life in general, like not necessarily just just sport management and um, just kind of our, our journey here at the college. So if you do have questions about that, we're, we're happy to answer any of that stuff too. So um, any other, any other questions floating around out there that we can answer for you guys? Oh, a second. Are there any ski lodges around? <laughs> uh, I don't <laughs> ski. Somebody else is going to have to take this. Uh, I can take that one. Um, so there's, so yeah, I'm a big skier. A lot of my friends on the team are also big on skiing and snowboarding. So we go up to the mountains a lot uh, in our off season. Uh, we don't have a, as much time during the season, but in our off season, when the snow is good, we're always trying to get up to Breck and Keystone are both about two and a half to three hours away from uh, UCCS. And I think Monarch might be the closest one, just under an hour away, but that's not on the Ville Resorts Pass, which is called the Epic Pass or the Icon Pass. Those are the two um, like expensive passes that everyone gets, and it gets you into a bunch of resorts for the entire season as much as you want. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good skiing in Colorado and you definitely won't ever get bored or run out of resorts to visit. So that's cool. I can, okay, thanks. Sorry, um, I can also add on to that for freshmen. Um, I don't know if they really did it a lot this year, but I know that they offer kind of like um, ski day trips that they take students up um, so, you know, if you don't have a car, if they're not, you know, a group of people that you go up with, um, there's always kind of opportunities through campus and like the rec, um, center. So there's always that option. And, um, if you're looking for like a cheaper pass, um, I, um, have the summit value pass and it's just for Breckenridge and Keystone. So there's different options. Like if you want to try to make it a little bit more affordable, but, um, yeah, so there's always op option through our campus too. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys for answering that. That is so above my head. So I'm glad that we had some people on the on the panel that that could answer that. Um, any anything else? Anything else that we can that we can answer for you guys? That was a good question. Um, for the student athletes, like, how do you manage your time between like your sport and then uh, school? That's a, that's a great question. And like I said, Audrey and Liam are, are the two to, two to ask that. So if one of you two want to tackle that one. Yeah. Um, so I am on the track team, like I mentioned, and um, track is a little bit unique just because we have both an indoor and outdoor season. So I'm basically a student athlete year round. Um, but I would say that first of all, most coaches, I, I can't really speak for all, um, you know, sports, but most coaches are really awesome about knowing that academics comes before athletics and are really awesome about um, being flexible with your academic schedule. Um, and honestly, I found being on an athletic team to be such an advantage because it's an automatic group of people that you um, share a lot of similarities with and are kind of just like this automatic community. So um, really, I haven't found it very challenging to manage my time just because I was an athlete throughout high school and you had you know, high school, school, and, um, you know, your athletics in high school as well. So um, just managing your time, honestly, college classes are a little bit more flexible than high school classes. You kind of get to customize your schedule a little bit throughout the week. So that's super helpful. And um, yeah, like I mentioned, I think coaches are really great about being flexible. So I found it just, you know, to be an advantage, nothing to take away from my academics at all. Yeah, to add on, freshman year might be a little tough getting used to a, a bigger schedule with sports and academics, but I think if you just get into your routine, um, 
plan out when you're going to do homework. I know some of the sports teams have mandatory study hall for their freshmen, so they are sure to get their work done. Um, but yeah, just get into your routine. Know when you're going to do homework, when you're going to recover or do rehab for sports. Yeah, it's not too hard. Your teammates will help you out with all that. Coaches will help you out. Cool. Thanks, you too. Um, yeah, you guys lend a, a really interesting perspective. So I'm glad that we could get some student athletes on here. Um, Olivia, did that answer your question enough? Do you have any follow up there? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about some more questions? Anybody else have any any questions out there? Colorado Springs of um, intramural sports. Say that again. I heard intramural sports, but I didn't hear the first part. Um, does Colorado Springs have intramural sports? We do. We do. And, and some of us get a little more competitive than others um, in those intramural sports. But um, yeah, the rec center hosts all of those. Um, they're all run through the rec center. I think uh, it's like $15 for a semester and you can play as many as you'd like. Um, they have individual events. They have team events. Um, they'll do like special one-off tournaments that are kind of fun, like they did mini golf one time. Um, and we went and uh, tore up the course uh, that particular day. Uh, they do like cornhole, but then they do your typical like flag football and um, soccer and, and all that jazz. So uh, yes, yes, there are definitely intramural sports here. Okay, thank you. If I can add one thing, there's intramural sports with COVID right now, even though, you know, COVID's happening, there still are those intramural sports. And there's a lot of them. Like I think we have a, an equestrian team. I'm I'm on the figure skating team, which is a little less weird than an equestrian team. I feel like, but they're a lot of fun. You should really join them if you're thinking about it. Oh, we also have a flipping club. It's like two guys, and they just flip on the lawn, and I love it. <laughs> Courtney, the only reason I would say that figure skating is more strange is because you're from. Is it Houston? Yeah, I know yeah. it's more in Texas, and that is just so bizarre to me. I love hearing that story every time you tell it. So, um, did that answer your question about the IMs? Yeah, well, I'm a hot. Yeah, I'm a. By the way, I'm a hockey player. By the way, that's that's what I was wondering. Mm. Oh, okay. Do we have Courtney, club we have hockey team? team? Yeah, yep. we have a hockey team. They're really nice. Okay. <laughs> maybe. So maybe see what happens. I guess so. Yeah. I'm a, yeah, because I'm a goalie. I don't lost any goalies or something. I'm a goalie. You can also right. always check on Mountain Lion Connect. They have that's where like all our clubs post everything. So if it's not like an us I am sport through the rec center, they also have theirs, like where all the clubs have their things. So like club hockey, you know what I mean? Like the club sports teams will post things through there and you can like join their email list and that kind of thing. So Mountain Lion Connect is like a big way to get involved on campus, and that's where like Everyone who wants to create something, create something. So you can definitely look at that too, because I'm sure there's something. Okay. Yeah, Taylor, that's a good point. There's um, obviously like our, our division two teams, which is like what Liam and Audrey are on. Um, and then there's these club teams like Taylor was talking about, and they still like travel, they still play other schools and stuff like that. Um, and then intramural sports would just be kind of for like everybody else who just kind of wants to do it for fun. So um, if you are serious about hockey, you're probably in the, in the club, the club boat it, it depends i'm just kind of wondering just in general i just kind of like you know want to play sports for fun but just in case i could ever you know it's just in case it ever came around you know it's, may, it's a maybe for sure for sure cool just first and foremost again thank you guys for being here i i know it's it's tough with scheduling and, and being online is is difficult for some folks so uh thank you for attending today um I'm sure some of us would be more than willing to stick around for an extra long, or for a little bit longer, excuse me, um, if you didn't want to ask a big question to the group, but but still have some questions. So um, we'll we'll stick around here until about five o'clock or so. Um, but for the rest of you, if you don't have any questions, thank you. And uh, we hope to see you at UCCS here very soon.